Chapter 10. An Afterword. On reading the foregoing pages after they have been set up in type, we are impressed with the idea that in spite of our determination, as expressed in the first few pages, not to attempt to lay down a code or rules or a course of conduct which should be considered as an infallible guide to success, in spite of our vowed determination not to pose as a teacher or preacher, we have nevertheless managed to do a considerable amount in the direction of laying down the law, so far as it concerns the naming of things to be done, or to be avoided. However, we feel that the advice given is good, and that the various examples quoted are calculated to arouse within the mind of the reader the spirit that leads to success. And, with this thought, we send forth these pages to those who may attract them to themselves, or who may be attracted to them, under the law of attraction. But we feel that we shall not have completed our task unless we, once more, remind the reader that success is not to be gained by a blind and slavish following of anyone's rules or advice, our own any more than those of any other person. There is no royal road to success, no patent process by which the unsuccessful are to be magically transformed into captains of industry or magnates of Wall Street. There is nothing more amusing or pitiful, according to how one views it, than the bulk of success talk given to the public by self-appointed teachers and preachers. There is no one who can in a few pages point out to seekers after success an infallible method whereby each and everyone may attain the success and attainment that their hearts crave. It is a cold, hard truth that each and every man must work out his own salvation in the matter of success. Rules and advice may greatly assist and they undoubtedly do this, but the individual must accomplish the real work. He must carve out his own destiny, and there is no power above or below that will do the work for him if he refuses to perform it himself. The old saying that, God helps him who helps himself, is true in more senses than one. It is true. In the sense that the higher aid seems to refuse to come to the assistance of one who is not willing to strike out for himself and do his best. But it is true in another sense, this aid does come to one who will throw heart and soul into the task set before him, and who will do each day's work as best he can, with hope in his soul, and a confident expectation of better things. Right ahead, around the turn of the road. The wise man is the one who takes courageously the step right ahead of him, planting his foot firmly and confidently upon it, although he is unable to see further ahead. To such a one each successive step is illuminated as he proceeds, and he reaches his goal, whereas the shrinking ones, who have feared to take the obvious step because they could not see beyond it, are still waiting for something to turn up. This waiting business is a poor policy, as Garfield said, don't wait for something to turn up, go out and turn something up. Take the step before you boldly and hopefully, and the next step will then appear. The thing to do is that which lies right before you to be done, do it the best you know how, feeling. Assured that in its doing you will be making progress toward the better things for which your heart has been longing. New ideas come while you are in action, in the doing of things comes. The inspiration for the doing of greater things. You can always get a better running start when in action, which will give you an advantage over the best standing start imaginable. Get into action and motion. In this little work we have endeavored to call your attention to something of far greater importance than a mere code of rules and general advice. We have pointed out to you the glorious fact that within each of you there is a something, which if once aroused would give you a greatly increased power and capacity. And so we have tried to tell you this story of the something within, from different viewpoints, so that you might catch the idea in several ways. We firmly believe that success depends most materially upon a recognition and manifestation of this something within, we think that a study of the character and work of all successful men will show you that differ as they do in personal characteristics, they all manifest that consciousness of that something within them that gives them an assurance of inward power and 
strength, from which proceed courage and self-confidence. You will find that the majority of successful men feel that there is a something helping them, back of and behind their efforts. Some have called this thing by the name of luck or destiny or some such term. But it is all a form of the same recognition of an inward power that they are helped in some way, although they are not quite sure of the nature of the helper, in fact, the majority of them do not stop to speculate upon its nature, they are too busy and are content with the knowledge that it is there. This something within is the individual, the I in each of them, the source of the power, which men manifest when they express it. And this little book is written in the hope that to many, it may be the first step toward the recognition, unfoldment and manifestation of this inward power. We earnestly urge you to cultivate this, I am, consciousness, that you may realize the power within you. And then there will come naturally to you the correlated consciousness which expresses itself in the statement, I can and I will, one of the grandest affirmations of power that man can make. This, I can and I will, consciousness is that expression of the something within, which we trust that you will realize and manifest. We feel that behind all the advice that we can give you, this one thing is the prime factor in the secret of success. The end.